Welcome back to PJGN Design. We're going to talk about this halo setting with a little bit flower structure on the side. Are you ready? Let's get started. We're going to start it from view for whatever ring size you want it. In this case, I'm going to use 16 millimeter diameter. And we are going to bring in a stone. And if you want to know how to make this stone, I have a video for it. Or there's a stone setting class. The link is on the right top corner for you to check it out. Okay, so we want to bring in the stone and kind of lower down the stone to whatever the, the stone that you want them to be. Ideally, the cooler you want to make sure it's to the ring shank that you have at least 0.5 to 1 millimeter distance over there. So let's go ahead to make a setting for it. We wanted to draw a straight line, come over here and roughly over the table height. And then you want to bring in something like that, taper a little bit. This is going to be the prong we can change the location or placement later on but we wanted to make it into the prong first so I wanted to make somewhere close to 1 or 1.2 millimeter um, is thick enough for the printing and then you want to make sure that your prong is not cutting more than 25 percent uh, to make sure that it will maintain a good thickness after casting and stone setting so something like that will be great now I have this one it's going to be polar ray into four prongs so we are going so we are going to come into here and we have array we have polars the center will be zero and we need four piece there for 360 degree so after that we need to have something to hold the prong in place so let's go ahead to make a bezel underneath it something is going to be longer again you want to tilt it with the same angle of your prong and we want to move in a little bit i also want to make sure that i have the stone already cutting the seat a little bit uh, so i'm going to draw a straight line follow the stone size moving just a little bit using that line and this line let's go ahead to trim each other we're gonna get rid of here here and here then we just make sure we need to join them there Okay, so once we have that, we are going to use this one and that's using the um, revolve, snapping into the zero one more time, 360 degree and we'll get something like this. So then this cup will actually hold in this one. Before we actually boiling it, I'm just simply just gonna group them just in case we need to change it later. Okay, so that is the center stone. The second thing that we wanted to do is we kind of need to draw the halo area. And so coming into the top view, I'm going to draw a rectangle. In this rectangle, I'm gonna starting from the center, type it zero, and something look like this. And then I simply just to um, rotate it 45 degree there. And then you can decide if this is too big or too small and you want a bigger or smaller or things like that. I think I want to talk in a little bit more something like this so this is our reference i'm going to using the curve and draw something coming in a little bit and then coming out like this coming in like this and snapping somewhere in the middle so then i have this a little bit curve uh pedal over there let me go ahead to mirror that curve to the other side so then i have this pedal looking things here using the polar array and we want to snapping into the zero that's repeating four time and see if that is the good good size that you like if you do like it then just go ahead to join all of them now it is more like an aesthetic approach if you want it to be really pointy like this i personally don't like too pointy so i'm gonna give it a fillet let's try fillet corners and i want to fit it to be 0.4 millimeter of this curve so they will have something like this is a little bit smoother the curve that I have depends on what size of a stone you're going to set in this case I'm going to offset it to be 1.3 millimeter then I will have another curve right here and again I do not like the pointed there so we are going to use the fitted corners and with the, the same um, radius 
4.4 millimeters. So then I will get something like that. I'm going to moving this one to the top or close to where my um, halo is going to begin. So it will be something like that. Take a look if that is a good position. And if you like it, let's go ahead to pick up those two curves. And we wanted to do a uh, extruded planar curve. But this time, let's make sure that we want them to be tapered a little bit because it will look nicer. Okay, you can taper in any degree you want. So far we have it opposite. So I'm gonna come into the draft angle here. Let's type in minus 15. And I wanna move my mouse down and see if that is something that I like. And maybe if the 15 is too much, let's try something smaller, minus five. We just need a little bit taper, but we wanna make sure that it is uh, past, it can be past the ring shank that we are working on. So now I have something like this. You can taper a little bit more if you want to. And if you have something like this, and which means the draft angle is actually not it is too big for it, but it's not tapered enough, then what do you want? You simply can actually just copy this to the bottom and we just 3D scale this down. We're gonna use in the loft command and we're gonna loft from here to here to here to here. You have to select in the order, okay? And make sure they are aligned. Uh, currently they are aligned, but I also, always prefer them to align somewhere along with my construction plan and then you will have the option here so in this case we do have it is for the normal and if you want to go straight you can go you can go tight to have this puffy setting if you want to or you can make a straight section and it will go straight like that uh, this re um, depends on which one you like you can also close the loft so they will become solid there so let's click ok then this is what we get there all right so now what we have this we need to decide it like uh, how tall we want this to have i'm going to making a copy of this one and it doesn't have to be exactly the same thickness. I could have 1D scale to make them a little bit taper it down if you want to. So once we have that, we are going to go to the solid, extrude it planar curve straight and make sure you want to do on the both side. So then you will have a solid there. Let's go ahead to use the bowling intersection we're gonna intersect in between here enter and this one so then that will be whatever is left there so we are going to use the bowling intersection we're gonna click on this one enter and this one so this is what we have left there and that is for the position for our head Okay, so to set a stone, I need to find where is the center for me to set in the stone. Let's go ahead to pick up those curves and let's go ahead to hide it. And we are going to duplicate some curve here. That's using the duplicate edges and we're going to duplicate it this edges and this edges here. So now we have a two curve over there. To find out where it's in the middle, I'm going to use the twin curve and moving the point to the center. So now we have this one, it is right in the middle. It may not be 100% fitting into the surface that you have there, but that's okay. We can use the command for pull to pull it back to this, oops to this surface. So now this is exactly on the surface. We want to bring the stone for whatever size that you think will fit it in there. So I'm going to have this one being split into the by the point from here and here. And let me turn it into the red color so it's easier to show you. Let's go ahead to find out what is the length of that red line there um, using the command length and it is 6.858 so let's go ahead to draw the straight line right there with the same length and we want to move the stone to the beginning over there move it down to the close to the line 
and we are now just dealing with the line you can simply just using the align horizontal center to get this one and we want to make sure that it's roughly center is at the beginning of the stone set there okay and then the second thing we wanted to do is draw the straight line for the prong and pipe it to making into the thickness if you have a shared prong, your prong need to be bigger. And if it is individual prong that's not shared, they can be smaller. I'm going to move it this prong roughly right there. By visually, I might need to make them still slightly bigger. All right, let's give it a try. We are going to array along the curve and we are going to have this curve and for six of them. And then we're gonna move this prong here to make sure that they cut it equally on the both side coming a little bit and we wanted to mirror to the other side so that's using the array along the curve again and we want to pick up this uh, ba uh, base curve and we want to do six of them as well this one we can simply just mirror to the other side with the vertex is on all right, so this is the stone we are going to flow back. We might need to adjust the prong later on, but let's go ahead and give it a try. And you don't need the prong is way too tall. I think this one is way too tall. I just need to move it down a little bit. So let's give it a try. We're going to have all of this flow along curve. Make sure the row lies equal. Yes, and we do not want to uh, ch uh, change the shape. So rigid here equal yes. And the base curve, we're going to come in here to select that curve. And the target curve, we're going to come in here to select this target. Now the starting axis, because it's the stone is seated really face up, so it's going to align with the Z axis. We just hit enter. The second, which is the end, it's going to snap into this point. So make sure your endpoint is on. We want to snapping into this point by telling it what angle the stone is going to be. And I will get something like that. All right, so after we get this, let's take a look on the perspective and see if they fit it really well. If they do, we might need to uh, organize the stone a little bit. I might need to have an additional uh, prong over here on the top. So I'm just going to make a copy. Okay, and we can just do a bunch of the mirror here. So in this case, all of this, it's going to be mirror to the bottom. And we might need to have an additional prong over here. And make sure they won't be like right high. So we just need to move in this down. So once we have everybody, I forgot to mirror that one. So I'm going to mirror that to the bottom. Okay, so now we have to mirror everybody beside the center one because we don't want to repeat it and have that mirror to the other side. So now we have things like that. You need to do some adjustment on the prong in certain position. For example, this was a straight down. We will need to have it tilted a little bit and cut in a little bit or something like that. Okay, so you can do some adjustment your own. And then after that, we just need to make a ring shank. I'm going to hiding everybody over there. And we simply just want to creating a simple bend. I'm going to use the conic corner from the rectangle, snapping here for whatever, how wide you like to have, but round the corner, something like this. And let me move it um, from the midpoint to here. And let's give it a try. We want to use the um, sweep one rail. This is the rail. This is the cross section. And make sure you record the history and let's click OK. And if you like that, that's fine. We can just use that. And if you don't like that, you can always make them wider or um, thinner by doing 1D scale on that. Uh, to change the shape of the ring chain. So we don't want it to have a ring chain to cross right at the bottom. We can use the bowling split and to split this one by this C over there. And if it doesn't work sometimes, it's because the seam is completely aligned over there. So we only thing we need to do is moving this down to 0 0.01 millimeter. I have a video talking about why bowling is not working. So let's do one more time is bowling split and this one will be split by this one.
and we can go ahead to delete the parts in the middle that we don't need it all right then the rest of it is filled the edges and bowling union the rest of it i hope you enjoyed today's video whether you are a beginner or you are more advanced jewelry cat designer there are three things you need to know to boost your jewelry cat design skill I have a free webinar for you and the link is in the description below. Hope you like it and thank you for watching and I'll see you next.